Today's guest is Heath Ellenberger. I've got to know Heath over the past several months, and every time we talk, I'm inspired. He brings out creative ideas, new information. He owns 12 Orange Theory Fitness Studio locations. He's the author and creator of Triforce 45. He has a podcast called Afterburn After Hours. I can't wait for you to hear this conversation with Heath. I've got a question for you. Who is the person you're being? Are you satisfied? It's okay. This is a judge-free zone, and it's exactly why I started the show. Welcome to Be The Person, a podcast for the brave and the curious who are ready to explore who they are fully created to be. I'm your host, Annie Randall, the adventurous one leading this investigative journey of transformation. By delving into topics and asking unexpected questions, we will discover the keys for unlocking our true potential and being our best selves today. You may be surprised by what you find when you let go of fear in order to discover the answers of becoming the person you were made to be. Welcome to Be The Person podcast. I am so excited for today's guest to share all of his information. Heath Ellenberger is an owner of Orange Theory Fitness. He owns 12 studios. He also has a podcast, mentor, coach. He does it all. So welcome, Heath, to the podcast. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm super happy to be here. Yeah, I know you, you know, we became friends a few months ago and you've reached out and just been super helpful for me personally and shared so much valuable information. And I just wanted you to share that with the audience as well, because you have all these little nuggets of gold information that I believe the audience will definitely benefit from. And one of my first things that I love to have people do is, you know, you do all of these things now, but I love to have people start with their story. How did you get to where you're at today? Yeah, well, first, uh, I hope that people aren't disappointed if they don't get all the nuggets that uh, that you're hoping they get. So we'll, we'll do our best. Uh, so it started for me. Uh, I turned 18 when I graduated high school and I, I really didn't have a direction of, you know, college and, you know, kind of what I wanted to do. I was like, you know what, I'll just go be a phys ed teacher. That seems like a pretty easy job. We'll play some dodgeball, kick some basketballs around and have a good time. And so, you know, that's what I decided to do is, you know, I was going to be a, a, a phys ed teacher. And uh, I remember my first day, 8 a.m., of my college class was Robin Stats 217. And uh, I remember asking my teacher or professor, why as a gym teacher do I need to know probability statistics? Because, uh, you know, I can look at somebody and be like, the probability that they're going to get knocked out in dodgeball is pretty high, um, just athletically speaking. So I don't know if I need to have this class. And she said, you're going to have a rough time in this class, Ellen Berger. And uh, she was not wrong. And so that's when I kind of really, really decided, like, what am I going to do? And I, I actually had gotten my personal training certification. Like I graduated high school and got my certification because I was always into fitness and I was always into lifting weights and um, just, it was a passion of mine. And so I was like, well, you know, like maybe we try this. And so while I was in school, I was training people and getting into the whole industry of training. So I've been in the personal training industry since I was 18. That was back in 2003. And, uh, once I got out, once I got out of school, figured out phys ed wasn't, wasn't the track for me. Um, I started training, started working with, um, sports teams, a lot of high school football, um, had some AAA baseball players I was, I had worked with and really kind of, uh, kind of came into my own in the fitness industry. And that's when life took me to, uh, Virginia, Virginia beach area. And that's when I really got involved, heavily involved in um, kind of deep into the industry. And then I got married and decided I was gonna open a gym two weeks after I got married. And uh, we had no money. I had about 850 bucks in savings. And I found a spot that I had no equipment, 
I had a vision of what I wanted and I had enough balls to just go do it. And that's why I tell people a lot of times is there's never a right time. You had, you never have enough money. You never have the right support system. You never have this. You're not going to have that. So you can stack all those odds against yourself and those become, you, you are your limiting factor at that point. And I just had enough vision and guts to go do it. And so I put an $800 security deposit down on a 900 square foot storage unit, uh, basically a concrete murder shack. And uh, that was the first kind of start of my gym business uh, kind of history. And um, I, I learned some early lessons in marriage at that point too, because I hadn't talked to my wife about this. Um, the conversation came up when she got declined at the gas pump. Uh, she was like, well, why, what's going on? And I was like, oh, actually pretty exciting news. And, uh, and it was only exciting for me apparently at that point. So it was uh, a lot of early lessons on how to communicate with your spouse. Uh, luckily I learned that two weeks after marriage. And, uh, and so, yeah, so that's kind of, I was 24 and I had, like I said, had a vision and, uh, and ran with it. So we had a gym at Virginia beach. It was called fit functional, innovative training. And uh, we had it for about six years. I had gone through three locations, um, went from a 900 square foot storage unit to a 6,000 square foot um, dream facility. If I could ever dream up the place that I had it. And uh, we, we were super blessed to be in that situation. And um, in 2015, I was speaking at an event in New York City and my wife, we went to dinner and she asked me the question. She was like, what's the next five years look like? I had just turned 30. And she's like, because can you keep this speed up for the next five, 10 years? Because when you hit 35 and you turn 40, things change. And in my head, I'm not that rational of a thinker. I, you know me, I'm just like, let's go. I'm Superman. I can handle it all. And luckily, uh, God gave me a wife that can uh, be a great discerner for me and uh, help me realize I am still human. And so that's when we started looking. And that's when Orange Theory kind of found us. and. Uh, we got involved with the brand in 2015 and uh, my wife and I kind of were looking to take a back seat and kind of just spend time enjoying being married because our whole first five years, six years of marriage was business partners. We, you know, she was doing dental hygiene and then she would come and do coach classes in the evening. I was training all day. I was growing the gym. I was marking the gym. I was doing B2B and I was training clients. and. Um, we had deals with apartment buildings. We had deals with other corporate businesses where I was out doing those things. And so we, we really were just hustling our first five, six years of marriage and never really had a chance to just enjoy being married. Uh, so that's kind of where that's early stages of where I was at. Then we got involved with Orange Theory. We moved down to Jacksonville. Uh, so our partners now, now back then, Donna Fenchel was the original franchisee in Jacksonville. And then uh, George Backish and Leslie uh, became partners for the, 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 you know, studios upcoming. At the time though, there was two studios in Jacksonville. We took over one as uh, manager and head coach. And we went in there and just loved them that place. Uh, when we got there, they had 334 members, I want to say. And about a year later, we had 640. And that, that growth was a true testament to the team that we built, to the culture that we put into that studio, the love and care, and what I call give a crap. Uh, that really, that's what built the studio. We didn't do anything special. I, I'm not, I'm like Forrest Gump, man. I, I, I don't have all the answers. You know, life's like a box of chocolate. Uh, I just love on people, care about what, what we're doing and, uh, and, and build great teams. And, uh, that's, that's when corporate, uh, picked me up until the 16, I went to work for corporate from 16 to 19. And then the group that I came down to work for in 19 offered me an opportunity to come back as their operational partner of at that point, seven locations. My wife was working for a different franchisee at that time. And we bought that studio, rolled it into the portfolio of Jacksonville. And then that, that became eight studios. And then since since post COVID, we've opened four more. So now we're at 12. Yeah. So good. So. I love that. And just love how hearing how you got involved, because I think we all come to Orange Theory through a different tract and way. Um, 
but I've seen, you know, you minimalize it of how much you grew that studio, but I know how hard that is. And mm -hmm. you are really good at building great teams and just loving on people to build that community because that's what Orange Theory, I think, is all about is the community, yeah. the team, and the results just follow for people. Yeah, you know, people always ask, like, what what did you guys do? And I'm like, listen, it, it it's not that hard. And people think that that this that fitness is like this complicated business. It's not. It's relate. It's a it's a relational business. The best thing I can tell you is what my wife and I decided to do when we got to Mandarin. That's the location we took over. Uh, what we decided to do was meet every person who was an active member, and we wanted to spend at least 15 minutes with every single person person asking them what they liked what they didn't like what they'd like to see improved how we can help them and really just these mini consultations we spent our first month we probably did over 200 of these mini consultations but our mission was we want to touch every single person if we're going to be the people that people are putting their trust in then we need to let them know we're here to support them and so again it, we didn't do anything special we just took time and invested that time into the people that were coming to the gym. And over, over time, that investment returned and returned and returned. And I think that's where too many people look at all these metrics and KPIs and all this and that and marketing plans and strategies. And, and again, all of those things are important, 1000% important. But if you don't have the community and the relationship, none of that matters. Absolutely. I always tell our team that people do business with people they like and trust. And so yeah. if we can be those people, then they will come back and support our business. Yeah, absolutely. There's a ton of fitness concepts out there. You know, you had your own. What really drew you to Orange Theory in the beginning? So it's funny. I my background is I love program design. I love designing the program. And I was speaking in New York that, that 2015 on small and large group program design to other fitness professionals on how to do it at their places and how to scale that. Right. And so I'm a very big person on program design, um, just from my, you know, nerdy background. So when I, when I heard about orange theory, my biggest, I guess, fear was that that was a piece that was now removed from my control. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when we started getting into the workouts and, you know, I was hesitant. I took that first workout and I was like, ooh, I got smoked. You know, yeah. I, uh, I was, I, I didn't run at the time. I wasn't a runner. I, 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 the only thing I ran was I pushed a slide 40 yards and that was about it, you know? So that was the most cardio I was getting. And I took that class and I, I, I was like, I get it. And, and back then, as you know, 2015, we were still trying to find an identity in like the workout and what we do and all the things. And, and that department's grown a lot since, since 15, but, uh, but yeah, I think we, we, we kind of fell into the workout. We were like, this is good. And the nice thing is the biggest stress I had in the business was designing all the workouts that took so much time and energy every day. And so it was like, if I can remove that, how much more can I pour into the business and people? And I was like, and I think that was the big thing for us is if that's off our plate, we can just solely focus on people and building our team and our culture. And I think that was the biggest draw to Orange Theory was just those systems and processes that we were trying to create and dream up on our own and not knowing what we didn't know, we were basically be, being given that inside of a, a franchise business like Orange Theory. So good, because that can be some of the hardest part. And as a business owner, you get thrown so much if you're also coaching and designing. And I always say, you know, I had a bigger ego going into this business thinking, oh, I can do it. I can do it all. And it quickly humbles you when you see <laughs> how much you have to do. And I can only imagine having your own brand and having to do all that on top of running a business. Yeah, it. You know, it was a lot of work in a different way versus what, you know, what we were coming from. So I wouldn't say one's easier than the other. They're both, they both have their, their challenges and they both have their uh, unique uh, 
sticking points, but I, I will say that having the support, um, I never forget the, the first time I realized the power of the brand was when we got a phone call from a lady and she was like, Hey, I'd like to come in and take a class. My sister does this in Tampa. And, and when I had my location, no one was ever calling me and being like, Hey, my sister does this in you know Chicago. I, I had one location. I was, I was it. And so I, that's when I really understood the power of the brand is how how much bigger the brand is than you are. And um, so that's kind of really when I kind of picked up to like, okay, this this thing's this thing's big. Um, and again, that was 15 when we had just maybe 300 some locations open in the country. Little did we know the unicorn that Orange Theory would be, you know, as a, as a franchise. Yeah, so good. Cause we came, we opened our first studio in 2014. So we've been there too, of seeing the brand grow, seeing the power of the brand. And it's so awesome when people are comparing workouts across the country, really across yeah. the world now. And I, I love that part of it. Um, you've really seen OTF evolve, especially in the past few years, you know, post COVID, I think we all had to figure out this is a different world that we live in. How have you seen Orange Theory evolve since then? And just what are your thoughts on everything you see Orange Theory starting to do, knowing like what's coming in the future? It's a good question. Um, you know, I think just like everybody, initially we were trying to figure out what's best. You know, um, number one, is it safe to open? Is it too early to open? If we do open, do we go every other station? Do we limit it to no cardio at all and just do strength? And there was all of these, these what if questions, which causes anxiety and all it, it starts to create issues. And, you know, being in Florida, we're an anomaly when it came to COVID, you know, we, we, we opened early and, you know, we were kind of the resistance, you know, and um, in, in a lot of ways, it was great. But then in a lot of ways we polarized some people, uh, I think doing, looking back, everyone was eager to get back. Right. I think, especially the workers and the, and the team eager to get back and do our thing, but we were never going to satisfy everybody at that point in such a polarizing time. So the people who wanted to get out of their house and do the exercises, they were super grateful. And then there was a whole other group that was, you know, you're unsafe, you're this, you're that. And so I don't think it was possible to please the masses at that point. It was just kind of like, we need to do something. So what we did, um, we actually removed four stations from every studio and we spaced out our equipment more so we could actually get more people, but still have them spaced out. So we had a storage unit with a hundred, you know, almost a hundred pieces of equipment in it for almost a year. Um, that we had that kind of extra space in the studios um, because we felt that was one thing that we needed to do to create that space where people felt like, you know, we were, we, we were trying to take all the measures that we could to make it a comfortable place. Um, and that, and that's on the franchisee level, right? Every, everyone was doing different things as a franchise group to, to make it comfortable for people to come back. Um, there were places in, you know, in the Northeast that were doing personal training sessions. Basically they were doing almost one-on-one -on -one sessions and, you know, you couldn't come, if you're going to do two on one, then you had to live with that person to come together. There's all these different restrictions and rules and all these things. Um, so I think at that time it was, everyone's out there for figuring it out on their own because no one had the right answer. What have we done post COVID now that every we're in this kind of new, this new business? Um, I think we're still all trying to figure it out, right? Because certain businesses were business models are designed for certain seasons. And I think that we're in a different season now as a brand and a company. And I think that we are, we are trying to evolve the concept. Um, we're not, we're not the same orange theory were, you know, four years ago. And that's a great thing because if you're not evolving, then you're being left behind. And so we are in that, I think as a company in that phase of 
evolving into the new form of what Orange Theory um, 2.0, 3.0, whatever point we are, um, is. It's just like when we do new studios. You know, you have you have your dip 1.0, and then you know, three years later, studios look completely different. And you know, because we have to keep refreshing and we have to keep the image changing and evolving and um, there's always new things and new technologies that are coming out and we have to stay on top of those, especially our industry is, is very quickly evolving across. Um, and, and I would say in the last 10 years, the fitness space has really kind of kicked up a lot of steam when it comes to just, you know, technology and integration of technology and fitness and all the things. Yeah. And I love how Orange Theory as a brand is really staying on top of that. You know, they are evolving with the technology. They've introduced the strength and tread classes, but still keeping true to what Ellen would call the multivitamin of like the Orange 60, because we yeah. know it works, but also adding in and being willing to adjust depending on what's going on in the market. Yeah. I know you've seen thousands of people, you know, you, for, for personal training, group training, now owning 12 studios, you've seen thousands of people in the fitness space. What's one thing you wish they knew? Oh, man, there's a lot of things I wish they knew. Uh, um, if I had to pick one, I wish people knew what it felt like to feel good. Because mm -hmm. I think. I think too many people wake up just being like, well, this is how my body is and my shoulders ache or my back aches or my knees are bad. I, I, I met with a lady. Uh, I was just happened to be randomly talking with a member at one of our locations. And um, she was like, yeah, my orthopedist told me I'll never be able to do a lunge again. And I was like, well, how old are you? And she was like 34. I was like, so does that mean if you fall down, you won't be able to get back up off the ground? Because essentially that's a lunge is standing back up off the ground. And she's like, I never thought about that before, but it, but, but that it doesn't have to be that way. You know, there, there are steps that you can take to feel good and fitness is a major part of that process. But when I say fitness, I'm talking, you know, maybe it's, maybe you're, you're doing a stem with physical therapy and you're strengthening and, and, and building the correct muscles and the correct uh, mechanics so that you can go do your fitness routine and not be in pain and not, not be doing more harm than good and listening to your coach. And not trying to do your own thing because you think you know how your body works. It's like, well, these guys are trained to understand the mechanics of the body and how they're supposed to work and work with what your body's capable and not capable of doing. And so I wish people knew what it felt like to feel good. Um, wake up and your body feels good. You have great energy. You slept great. And you you have your, your gut's not distended and bloated because you're not digesting food properly and your metabolism is slow. Like, I think that would be what I want. I would want people just to, what's it feel like to feel good? That doesn't happen overnight though. And I think that's the problem with where we are is everybody wants the immediate quick fix and fitness takes time. And it also takes time out of your day to do it. And uh, so I'll, I'll leave that one there for now. We may, maybe we'll circle back to it, but that's what I would want. Yeah. I love that for people because I think it's so true when your body feels good and you feel energized, like you just show up in the world different. And we've seen that. I'm sure you've seen that so many times of it starts as a physical journey for people. Like I'm going to make my body feel good, but what it does to your mindset just flips and you become more confident. You show up different. And I love that for people. Man, I, I, I we had a lady I'll, I'll keep her name anonymous, but she came in, her husband was working, working out with us. And she was like, I'm not a workout person. And finally got her into the studio. I remember she came in, she was kind of like, just like hunched over quiet, just demeanor was just uh, like, just closed off. And then over time, you could tell she's getting stronger. She's starting to lose a little bit of weight. She's toning, she's toning up a little bit. And then she's coming in and her shoulders are back and she's getting a little louder. And then all of a sudden, one day she's calling out guys in class and she's like, you're not doing all of your reps and you're cheating. And I'm like, I'm like, whoa, this is a brand new person. But like all of that was hidden. That was always there. 
but it was just hidden under insecurities and and not having the strength and the and the confidence to be that person. And I I I'll never forget when that day she called that guy out. She's like, Jim, you're not doing that right. And uh, but you know that's the power. That's the transformative power of what we do. And uh, and yeah, you're absolutely right. That confidence piece is I think especially uh, for for females is such a a a great thing. I love to see just like strong, confident women that come in our studios and, and just rock out class. I think it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And you mentioned it, that it's a journey and we all start from somewhere. And, you know, that was one of the things that really drew me to Orange Theory, because if you go to CrossFit or I came from the aerobics world or whatever it was, you know, you had to kind of keep up with your neighbor and there were certain things but Orange Theory really can take you wherever you're at, whether you're just beginning your fitness journey and you're significantly overweight or you're an elite runner and take you to the next level. And especially for me personally, I've just come off a pretty big injury of like, I'm modifying class a lot and the coaches are really, really great at helping me. So it's taken me back to like level one to know like, this is what we do for people. And it's given me confidence to know, yeah, no matter where you're at, at in that fitness place, we can really help you go to the next level. Yeah. And I, so here, so I think a key part of that though, is you're giving them permission to help you in that place versus I think a lot of members, we don't always know what's going on in your life. You know, as a coach, I can't read your mind. I don't have a crystal ball at the coach stand that I rub. And it's like, hey, treadmill three is dealing with a hamstring problem. Hey, station four on the weight floor has got a shoulder issue. We can see those things, but we don't always know the depth. But more importantly, maybe you're just having a bad day. Like on earth, my, my wife is a phenomenal person. My wife is, is so fantastic. Uh, but as a coach, she's a really good relator. And she told me one time years ago, that this member came in and she was like quiet in the rower. And so my wife was like, during the warm up, went over and sat next to her. And she's like, Hey, what's happening? What's going on today? Like, what can I do for you? And it was, the lady was like, I dropped my daughter off at daycare the, for the first day. And she was crying when I left. And it's the first time that we've like been apart. And it was, it was just the fact that she needed to just unload that to get to her workout. But had my wife not just recognized just how off this person was just from being around her so many times of coaching her and being able to be like, Hey, you seem like, what can I do for you? And it was just like a a vomit session. And then after that she was fine and she had a great workout, but we don't always know, or members give us permission to come in to allow us to be able to help where you are today, or maybe in this current season you're in with having an injury. And the problem is, is, if we don't know that and we're not able to read your mind and all of a sudden your injury keeps getting worse because you're just band-aiding, 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 um, then, then you end up being really injured and then you're not able to come to work out where potentially we could have fixed that or, or, uh, or give you a workaround um, while you're healing and getting back. So I think the big thing is, is you're kind of giving permission to the coaches and yourself to be like, I need some help right now. I can't do it on my own. I need some guidance. Um, to get ultimately back to where I want to be. So I think that's a key thing is if members are listening, give your coaches permission, like, like talk to them and let them know what's going on. It could be mentally, emotionally, physically, like they're there for all of those needs. And I think people think that we're just like, here's heavier dumbbells, you know? Um, So it's not always that. Yeah. I couldn't agree more because ultimately we just want members in the studio. I want to be in the studio and to, Sometimes it takes a lot of strength, I think, to say, hey, I'm hurt or this is happening in my body or whatever in my day and really give people permission. Our coaches want it. I think it's an honor when people will do that so we can help you. Sometimes you take a step back before you can take a step forward um, in the workout and just have that ability to do because our coaches are phenomenal at, at giving that advice. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite company for clean protein is by far and away ButcherBox. Everything they sell is humanely raised, no antibiotics, 
you get to choose what comes in your box, whether it's beef, chicken, pork, seafood, and you get to choose all of the cuts you want as well as how often you want. It's shipped direct to your house, so every time I go to cook dinner, there's meat in my freezer. They're giving our audience $50 off the first box. See the link in the show notes. You know, I think you're one of the only other owners that I know of that has a podcast. And I found out because Ellen, our founder of Orange Theory, was on your podcast, which I love. And your the podcast, uh, After Burn, After Hours, you started quite a while ago. But what was your why behind starting that? When you had Orange Theory, you had all the things going. I know you're busy. Why did you decide to do a podcast too? Yeah. So, because I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> that's probably the best answer. Uh, so, 2022, I believe, or maybe 20. Yeah, I think it was 22 uh, that we started it. Honestly, I don't even know. It's been two or three years that we've had it. What it started out as was an eight episode exclusive perk for members that were doing the transformation challenge with inside of our region. So we wanted to provide them with exclusive content for signing up for the transformation challenge. Because the one thing we always try to do with TC is we try to say, okay, yeah, it's 35 bucks for you to sign up. You may not win. However, over the eight week period, you got a ton of value outside of maybe winning or losing or losing weight or whatever it is, but you got a ton of value for your 35 bucks. And that's what we always try to do. And every year we try to try to up the ante and we try to outdo ourselves from the year before. So I had this crazy idea about the team and I was like, Hey, what if we do a podcast exclusive eight episodes? And they were like, dude, let's do it. And uh, I didn't know how orange theory was going to feel about it. So we actually kept it the first eight episodes are live on wherever podcasts are now, but we kept them on a Google Drive and we just sent the Google Drive link out to uh, to the members that were doing TC through like a text uh, as a, you know, here here's an underground, uh, you know, podcast episode just for you. So it started out just going to be eight episodes. Uh, I put it on I put it on SoundCloud uh, because members were having issues with the, uh, the the Google Drive link and all the things. So I was like, okay, SoundCloud's kind of underground. Maybe corporate won't find out that we're doing it. And uh, so that's kind of how it started. And then we started getting feedback and it started to become pretty obvious that maybe we should do this regularly. And then we heard we heard more members that weren't doing TC being like, oh man, it was super helpful. I should have done TC if I would have known X, Y, and you know that we had this stuff. And, and so it was like, wow. Maybe we, maybe we just change our focus and say, like, can we reach more people and help them have the same kind of revelations that, that, that we were hearing? And so then it kind of turned into, well, what do we do with it? You know, how do we expand it? How do we grow it? What's the cadence? What's our, what's our audience? And, and, then, and then it kind of turned into, okay, it's going to be a podcast. Let's, let's figure out how we do this. And so uh, I would say it started out as kind of a, a eight episode exclusive just for members. And now I think we're like 160 episodes. Awesome. I love that. And do you have, you know, I've seen, I've listened to a lot of the episodes and they're terrific. Is there a focus you have or how did you decide the direction that you were going to go with it? Yeah. um, There's only so much you can talk about, right? Like, especially around fitness and, and those different topics where people are actually interested you know, we could talk about super nerdy science stuff, but the average person doesn't really care about that. I've always, I've always told, you know, people I talk to, I'm like, listen, your members would rather play dodgeball than learn about an exercise, sit in exercise science class for an hour. So let's give them dodgeball. So that's where kind of our approach was, was what kind of dodgeball content can we give people that will keep them entertained, keep them engaged, but also have them leaving with some new knowledge of how to progress and how to get better. And then it was like, okay, well, we, start, we, we started finding out that coaches were listening and managers were listening and other owners were listening. And it was like, okay, let's service that crowd too and give them some Orange Theory knowledge. So there's been a couple episodes that have been specifically for 
like coaches or, or, or around sales or around leadership. Um, they're kind of sprinkled throughout there. And, and those are just things that we tried to, to provide. Um, when I launched my first book in 2021, uh, 10 Minute Leadership, I had gotten into a circle with some different authors and I wanted to kind of highlight their books. And so there was a period of time where I brought some different authors on to kind of have them get their get their book out there and get their information out there that I thought was all relevant to OTF. And also OTF members are business owners and they're salespeople and they're this. And so I felt like not just kind of a fitness only topic, but more of like a like a lifestyle podcast that has a fitness emphasis is kind of where we kind of morphed into. Awesome. You've done a great job with it and really a terrific podcast. I've learned a lot from it. And I know over the past several weeks, you have transitioned or just focused maybe on guys and Triforce 45. Can you tell us a little bit about this and where this came from, what it is? Yeah. So um, I was actually working on my second leadership book and I was supposed to come out this year. And I've been working on this stupid book for like two and a half years. And it's just, it's one, it's, it's a parable style book. So it's, it's very story content heavy. It's very character heavy. And so just, it's, it's time consuming. And I just, I have limited time uh, in my day. So I, I made a commitment to like, I'm going to do it in 2024. I'm going to sit down in January and do it. So one morning I woke up and I, uh, I start get my laptop out and start working on it. And I just felt like God be like, Hey man, like, let's put that aside for a moment. You're in fitness for a reason. You have a, you have a voice and, 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 a, and an influence. Uh, let's go, let's go get men and inspire and invigorate men in our world today through the power of movement, wisdom, and courage. And so I didn't really know what all of that meant at the time. I just started writing. And when I started kind of putting the framework together of, of like, okay, what are things that I've experienced that I've done personally that have, that have gotten me to different stages of, you know, um, overcoming anxiety. Like I had massive anxiety in 2017 and 18 to like, to, to certain points where like, I couldn't leave my house. And, and if I did, I couldn't leave my house without a bag of pills. And um, you just like all these crazy uh, things that were happening. It was like, okay, what were stage steps that I went through to finally be like, I'm ha I've had enough of this. We're going to make a change. Um, you know, what, what things in my fitness background could I bring to the table? And so I started to put all this stuff down into like paper and I kind of created this framework of a 45 day challenge on that on day 46, you do a hard thing. Uh, every year I start off the year with a 45 day challenge. That challenge changes year to year, depends on kind of what season I'm in. Sometimes it's physical, sometimes it's uh, business related, sometimes it's a challenge for me to learn a, learn a new skill or learn, uh, read, read a new book, or I tried, to, I tried to cram two books into 45 days one time. And so uh, every year is a little different. Uh, last year, I did two hard things, which kind of spurred this on. So um, I used to compete when I was younger in my early 20s uh and and bodybuilding and i turned 39 last year and i was like can i still do it i had this itch i still had it i hadn't scratched since i got with my wife we i i i love the sport i just never i didn't participate in it i was like you know what can i still do it and i decided to do it last year um so that was hard thing number one uh hard thing number two was six months later was a half marathon which i had never done um uh, before either and the goal wasn't just to participate. It was to be competitive because um, it's one thing to participate, but it's also another thing to be competitive. And uh, so because I think I already said I'm crazy, uh, those were my two hard things. And I, that's where I, when I do hard things in life, everything else on the peripheral becomes more focused because I'm honed in on that one thing. So everything else becomes more disciplined, more focused. And I, I wanted to bring that to this challenge. And so on day 46, you do a hard thing. And so for 45 days, you're spending each day um, in a wisdom pillar and a power pillar and an encourage pillar. And each day um, those things change and it progresses over the 45 days. That way on day 46, you have the power, wisdom, courage to swing your sling at your hard thing. 
So good. So each day, is it outlined kind of what you do or the framework for it? Yeah, so I'll kind of show you. Um, this is kind of what, what it looks like. So I don't know if you can see that, but day, this is day 15. And so you have your wisdom, your power, and your courage section. And the same thing kind of goes throughout the course of each day is, is kind of outlined. And so it's kind of workbook style. I made it big uh, because guys, if guys looked at this, they'd be like, ah, I can't read. I'm not reading that. Uh, so I made it look more like a magazine because for me, when I grew up, I read muscle fitness and, you know, men's fitness and men's journal. And so I made it, I wanted it big and I wanted it to feel more like a magazine than a book. And there's pictures in it because I guys like pictures. We're simple people. And so, um, you know, I wanted to just pull all those elements into, into this guide. And so, um, so yeah, every, everything's super detailed and the guys that I've shown early on, kind of, as I was building it, uh, they were, they were like asking questions and I would just like flip to the next page and they're like, all right, everything's there. So I tried to, I tried to answer all the questions that I could think of that may come up inside the guide. So good. Well, any success stories? I know it's newer for you that you've launched and we'll definitely, I'll link to the episode where you launched this, but any success stories that you can share? Yeah. So right now I'm doing kind of an early launch group. Um, so I had a couple of people do it before it came out and, you know, one guy had lost like six and a half pounds over the course of the challenge. Um, Another guy was like, you know what? I really just kind of changed how I approach my day to day with more gratitude because the courage section is done by three ways. It's done by gratitude, values, and hard things. Hard things is in the book I call picking up your daily stone. Too many times in life, we walk past the stone and just kick it down the road as opposed to just bending over and picking it up. It's like, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. And then we just kick that stone down the road. And it's like, well, how much further along could we be if we would have just picked it up originally? You might be a little sore. You might be a little tired. Just bend over and pick it up, you know? And so that's where um, the courage section is about doing hard things and gratitude is is the one section. He was like, dude, I to me, gratitude builds resilience because when you're going through it and we all go through it, if you can find something to be grateful for in that moment, you build the resilience to be grateful while you're going through it. Because there's always something to be grateful for. I don't care how bad stuff gets around you. There's always something that you can find and to be grateful for. It could be somebody. It could be a circumstance. It could be, hey, you know what? I made every green light on the way to work today. And that's what one of my guys that's going through it, he was like, dude, I'm grateful for green lights. Because he was like, I was going to be late going to my Orange Theory class today, but I hit every green light. And so, like, you know, it's, it's just sometimes... When you're focused on it, again, when I get focused on it, everything else becomes more clear and down to green lights being something you're grateful for. And so a lot of the things that I'm hearing guys talk about are not similar as as far as like the fitness part or um, losing weight or gaining muscle, but it, it's really meeting them where I, I kind of call this like, this is like your GPS on your phone. If you get lost, your GPS finds you where you are to take you to where you want to go. It doesn't start you back from where you started your journey. It meets you right where you are. That's what this is. This is meeting you wherever you happen to be in this moment. And it's taking you from this to ultimately where you want to go 45 days from now. Such a good analogy with the GPS. I love that because we're all in different places. We all need to go. If people, if guys are listening, or a lot of times it's wives that want their husband to do this, probably, um, where would they get that guide? Yeah, so they can either go to www.triforce45.com, uh, and then they can sign up on the newsletter. Or if they want to just go get the guide, they can go to Amazon, type in my name, Heath Ellenberger, and the guide's on there. I'll give you a little heads up, uh, preview. There is a female version coming as well. And uh, so my wife is working on a, a her version. And then we are also working on a couple's challenge as well. So those are kind of little teasers upcoming. But uh, but we've had such a great response with the male version. My wife's like, 
maybe we need to get a little female going on. I was like, listen, let's do it. So, um, so yeah, those are coming. Oh, so good. I'll make sure I link to both of those things in the show notes. Um, so people can connect and get those, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, we became friends. I reached out because I saw you had Ellen on your podcast and as an, another owner, I really wanted to connect, uh, one, it, just getting advice on being an owner too, as a podcast host, as an owner, but you honestly, I know how busy you are, how many things that you have going on in life with being married, having 12 studios, a podcast, but you've always been over those last uh, several months, reached out. You've been super helpful to me and my team. And can you just tell me a little bit about heart behind it? Because a lot of times I think we say we're too busy or we don't have time, but yet you seem like you've just made time. And I know you've helped me, but I'm not the only one. I see you do this for a lot of other people as well. I believe that, especially inside the Orange Theory Network, we're all part of the same brand. We're all part of the same family. If my dad called me and needed me to help him, if my brother called me and needed me to help him, if my brother-in-law called me and needed me to help him, why would it be any different than another owner or another manager or a head coach or a coach? We're all the same. We're all part of the same family. The fitness industry. Uh, I, there's people like work with outside of Orange Theory uh, because I believe that none of us have all of the answers, but there are things that I have experience and I bring to the table. Most of the things I have experience on is what I, what I did and didn't work, um, you know, and those lessons I learned from those, those failure moments. Uh, but there's also just, there's a, for me, uh, an internal kind of um, heart check to say, who can I help today? And can I bring some of my experience? Can I bring what, maybe it's inspiration, maybe it's information uh, to the table. And, you know, I feel like it, I'd be selfish if I wasn't in a position to um, be helpful and and really kind of pour into other people. And, and, and you know what, it fills my cup too, because it allows, it allows me to just share that knowledge and share, you know, whether it's just a conversation, sometimes it's a, a quick check-in. I checked in with a guy who was a member who found out about Triforce through the podcast and he's doing the challenge. And I checked in with him a couple of days ago and just, Hey man, how are things going? What do you need? And uh, he told me, he's like, Hey, I kind of hit a sticking point. Some of the questions are pretty deep. And, and, and I just, I just encouraged him to, you know, to, to, to keep pushing forward. So I think for me, it's just, I want to help people. I, since I was 18 years old, I only know like helping people. Uh, and, and I've always just kind of had that, that coach mindset of, uh, of, of like, let's, let's progress people. Let's move forward. Let's push together. Like this is when I'm training somebody, I'm not training you. We're training each other because you're challenging me as much as I'm challenging you. And cause I may come across somebody that's got a mobility issue or got a strength issue that I have to modify on in the moment. Um, so my plan's got to be flexible and I have to be adaptable. And so if I always just go into it as I'm training you, then I'm never learning anything from that. I'm not growing. Um, so I think for me, it's just, it's just kind of having that coach heart to say like, I'm just here to help and serve. And uh, that's what we're called to do. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. So good. You know, it's made me be more intentional on, I've just started an intentional practice probably around the time we met. And then it was one thing of like, who can you help today? Just setting that intention to go out. And like you said, it could be as simple as sending a text or connecting with somebody or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I think we're all busy and just setting that intention to do something for somebody else um, has been super helpful for me. And it just started with your example. So I truly appreciate that. No, absolutely. You know, time's a funny thing. Because my team will ask me sometimes like, oh, where do you find the time for all of the things? And time is like spare change. And where do you find spare change? You find it in the nooks and crannies. You find it in the drawer you throw everything else in. You find it in the center console of your car. If you're not looking for it, you won't find it. And I think that's what happens to a lot of us too many times is we're not looking for extra time. 
we're allowing time to pass by. And so when you're, when you're trying to be intentional, like you said, and find that time, it really changes. And you're like, I have way more time than I thought I had to do these things that are, that are fulfilling for other people versus me just sucking all my time away. And so, so yeah, I think that's great. You know, what you said is like, it's like being intentional with finding the time, just like, you know, if you're at a toll, you find change somehow magically you, you usually come up with the exact amount of change you need by just looking through your car, you know, but until that moment, you never thought you had it. So that, I, that's what I would say. So true. So true. As we wrap up today, I always love to ask people favorite books. I'm a pretty avid reader and it helps me uncover books that I never knew about. And I love, I think you learn a lot from a person by their favorite book. What would be yours? Uh, outside the Bible, I will say, uh, I'm looking at my bookshelf right now. There's so many. I think the, the power of moments by Chip and Dan Heath, phenomenal book. I love the power of moments. Um, setting the table, another great one that was a recent read for me. Um, I'll say those two. I mean, I think every John Gordon book is fantastic. Every Patrick Lanchoni book. But I think those are like the gold standards. If I was to go deeper and find some like more obscure books, I think I would go to those two um, to start with. Swagger by Leslie M. Phenomenal book. We actually did a swagger course for our female um, team members. And we did two rounds of it. I think we did four weeks at a time and uh, they at each time it was full and they, and the girls, they go, they loved it. So yeah. Swagger by Leslie M phenomenal book. Awesome. I haven't heard of that yeah. one. So I'll definitely check that out as well. Yeah. And she's fantastic too. She's, she's done some stuff with, uh, with my team. So a couple of years ago we had a leadership retreat and I get, I gave uh, different managers, kind of like put them in pairs and then gave them a different book that they had to present. And the two girls that did swagger didn't know, but I had Leslie on zoom. So when they were done, she came on the, like the screen behind them and uh, was like, great job girls delivering the swagger. And they like, they both like free, like freaked out, froze up. And it was so, it was so funny, but she's such an encouraging person. And, um, and she's, she's, she's fantastic, but great book, especially I think, for any female in a leadership position, uh, it, it's phenomenal. So, awesome! Thank you for that. Yeah. I know Let people me ask are going. Yeah. What's your what? Are, what are two of your favorite books? You know, you said Power of Moments, and that's one of them. I love that book. Um, but two from this year. One is The Magic of Surrender. That's been a game changer for me this year, oh, just because right. I really have felt called to let go and surrender some things. Yeah. And then I'm a big Mark Batterson fan and he wrote oh. a book circle maker. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So it was at the time I was opening orange theory and honestly, it's all about circling your biggest dreams in prayer. And yeah. for me, orange theory was one of the things that I circled in prayer a lot. And so that book, probably one of my most gifted books that I will give people. I, I love the circle maker. That's awesome. Yeah. In a pit with a lion on a snowy day is one of my favorite books uh, to just chase those big dreams. And uh, so, yeah, I love it. Yeah. So good. I know people are going to want to connect with you more. What is the best way to do that? Uh, they can shoot me an email, uh, just Heath Ellenberger at gmails, just my personal G, uh, my personal email, uh, Heath at triforce45.com. They can shoot me an email there. Uh, so yeah, if they want to contact or shoot me a DM on the afterburn after hours, Instagram page, uh, I get back to everybody. So yeah, multiple different ways. If I gave my, I would give my phone number, but my wife would be mad at me because so many people have my number and it, my phone never stops. So I probably won't do that. But if somebody really wanted to connect with me and they send me an email, I will call you because I, I prefer to just talk. So. Awesome. So good. I'll put all of those in the show notes. So I appreciate you giving those out. Awesome. Yeah. 
Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for sharing your time, your wisdom with us. I truly appreciate it. Um, thank you for being a guest on the podcast. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor. And thank you to our audience for joining in for Be The Person podcast. If this would help somebody you know, please share it with them. And as always, it would mean the world to me if you gave us a five-star review. Thank you so much.